Hi, I'm Justin Taylor with NetIQ. We're talking about advanced authentication today, and there's many different ways that we can use this technology. Uh, there's different ways that we could use it for what I know, using it to authenticate, what I have, and in a lot of cases nowadays, what I am, or something like my fingerprint, my face, or other types of technologies. To see how this actually works with NetIQ's advanced authentication, we have our friend Troy here again. Hi, Troy. Hi. Well, give me a little bit of information about what it is that's involved in actually authenticating with a biometric. Okay, so there's, there's actually a lot of um, trepidation sometimes when it comes to biometrics. People think, oh my gosh, you're going to have my fingerprint. What can you do with that? The, the reality is none of these devices actually store a picture of your fingerprint. They take that fingerprint, they look for anomalies on it, they take those anomalies and they graph a chart based on those anomalies, they run that through an algorithm and they store a number based on that. So it converts your fingerprint to a number. That number could not be reversed engineered into a picture of your fingerprint and then used for something else. So there's no reason to have any problems with it at all. And let's face it, fingerprints aren't really private anyway. How many fingerprints do you suspect you've left around the world just today? I'm guessing at the restaurant I ate at earlier today, there's probably a couple sets of them. Yeah. So people, people seem to get a little nervous about them, but there's really no reason to be nervous about them. Fingerprints are very public. We leave them everywhere. So I know there's a term here called enrollment, yes. which is where I go in and actually register my fingerprints. Yep. When I do that process, is if I register it at my employers and then go to, let's say, my bank or something and they do it there, even though it's the same system, same everything, are the figures, the number going to be the same that it stores? Probably not because the devices may be different. The algorithm that they use is based upon a key that's in their directory. So since you're talking about two different systems on the back end, they, even if they have the same readers, the directories may be different, so the algorithms would be slightly different. So they're most likely to be absolutely, totally different. You find this with people who are registering to be a real estate agent or someone who's registering to sell insurance. They have to go and do their fingerprints once and then oh, I'm going to get another license. I have to go and do my fingerprints again. Well, you know, they're always, why did I have to do it again? I just did it for these last people. It's all a license to the state. It's because the state has different systems in the back end. And one they're fingerprint from them. one isn't going to work doesn't on another. work on the other one. Exactly. Well, that's good because I know that a lot of people are, like you said, trepidatious or um, right. wary of using this. Right. Or wary of using it. Mm -hmm. um, give me an example about how this actually works. How simple really is it for a user? Okay. Well, we have a, a fingerprint reader set up here, and, and we're looking at a screen. So to log on, you would simply do your Control-Alt-Delete here, or like you normally would. And um, you can see that you have different device options here. You, I have a lot of options here because I do a lot of demos, but go ahead and click on the down arrow and select the fingerprint. First one. Okay. And now you see the picture changed at the top. Put your finger on the reader. Now it's, it's showing a picture here, but that's just so you can position your finger. See the arrow telling you to move your finger up and to the left or to the right? Now I got your fingerprint. So there is a difference in readers. I noticed this one yes. looks a lot more complicated than I've had some cheap ones yes. in the past. Yes. What is it about one like this that makes it valuable to a customer? Well, the, the main thing about that one is you can see that it has a lot of depth underneath the mirror in it, or underneath the glass. Uh, the depth allows it to have multiple mirrors inside, and it's, it is taking pictures, if you will, and it's taking pictures with different colors of light to be able to penetrate your finger. So the depth allows for multiple mirror angles and multiple light colors to be useful in getting a very successful read. You'll get a good read with a Lumidine reader every time. Every time you'll be able to enroll somebody. You won't find anybody you can't enroll. With another reader, such as one you might find on your laptop where you just swipe your finger across, very difficult for some people to ever enroll and then it's even more difficult for them to swipe their finger at the same speed or the same angle over and over. They're, they're harder to use. So there's a lot of difference between readers. So give me some example of uses. So um, I know that there's a lot of different places in um, government, um, mm -hmm. healthcare that are interested. Uh, take for example, I've now authenticated this. Why would someone in the healthcare industry be interested in using this type of technology? The main driver in healthcare today is the e-prescribed regulation. E-prescribed is a regulation that uh, has to do mainly with narcotics. So every time a narcotic is dispensed 
and that means whether it is actually the pr prescription written or physically dispensed. Those are both dispense events. There has to be an advanced authentication methodology used, and fingerprint is the common one there. So if I'm at my doctor's and he's prescribing something that electronically, something electronically, he's got to put his finger there to authenticate to prove it. it's him. And then over at my local pharmacy, they've got to do that's the same correct. thing. That's correct. Yes. Um, and that's a big driver. Uh, that's new. It's only about a year old, and it's a big push in the in the world of drugs that we have today. There are a lot of people abu abusing it. So this is one of the ways that they're keeping track of how the drugs actually get distributed. Okay. And it's proof of identity by a fingerprint. Um, your fingerprint actually goes in a national database then. So it's a much larger system. Another way in healthcare is, uh, let's think of nurses standing at a, at a nursing station. There may be three or four workstations there for a multitude of nurses on a floor. So they've all got to move pretty quick. They've got to do their jobs pretty quick or they're going to get very time constrained. So a, a biometric allows them to log in very quickly, allows them to get their job done and to walk away very quickly without having to remember a password or let's say they forget their password. Now if they forget their password and they've got a job to do, their first thing is to go, hmm, can you log in for me and let me do my work. You'll totally eliminate that. So, so I guess that would be some kind of violation, though. It's a great violation of HIPAA, and that's where the that's where the benefit to the company is. The benefit to the user is it's speedy and it works all the time. The benefit to the company is now you're within regulatory compliance. What about in the law enforcement side of things? Um, obviously, a lot of confidential information, very sensitive stuff there. What is it that we can do to help them? Okay, so law enforcement has a regulation called CJIS, the Criminal Justice Information System, and that that regulation uh, talks to people that are not within a confined, protected four walls of a facility, meaning a police officer going into the facility, their police station doesn't need to do anything special to log in. The physical security on the police station is considered enough. But when they leave that police station and go to their car, now they need a different methodology of getting in. Biometrics is a very fashionable uh, method for them to do that. It's very popular for them to be able to just put their finger down. They don't want to very carry... Very easy. You don't lose this very often. Well, they don't want to carry something else. You've seen a police officer. He's yep. got stuff stuck to him all over. So, you know, you don't want to make him carry something else. It just doesn't make sense. So biometrics is very popular there. And another place we've seen them utilized quite a bit is in finance. Right. And what can we do there that would be useful to someone in the finance world? Well, there's a lot of things. Um, one of the newer ones that I saw just recently is kind of unique. Um, say you go into your bank and you don't have your uh, debit card with you, but you want to make a withdrawal. So you walk up to a teller and the teller says, put your fingerprint down to identify yourself to the system. So that way banks can actually start using your fingerprint as an identification method. You don't need to pull your driver's license out because you could have made a fake driver's license. You don't need to pull out a card. You just need to carry your finger. Uh, another one, of course, is the tellers on the other side. They have a lot of the same scenario that nurses would at a nursing station. They're always trying to get a lot of work done with a very little amount of time. And so, moving from machine to machine. Machine to machine and, and the whole works. So. It's a great convenience factor there. Biometrics is very strong authentication method, so it's trusted in any of the regulations that are out there so as proof of identity. So that's, that's why biometrics is popular today. Well, hey, it sounds great to me. Thank you very much for coming and talking to Thank us you. today. Thank you all for watching. This has been Justin Taylor for NetIQ.